this is my science fair project. The objective of my project was to design and construct a mechanical system that emulates waves and to design and construct an anti-phase wave generator. Both will be used to study waves and the effects of wave interference in a fluid. Wave interference is used by noise cancelling headphones to suppress noise. While experimenting I have found that wave cancellation or interference also occurs in a fluid. Millions of dollars of damage occur in pumps, valves, and turbines each year due to pressure differences. I feel that wave interference may be used to reduce damage. This is the wave tank. It holds about three gallons of water. It's a custom acrylic tank created by an aquarium shop. I base the dimensions of the tank off of the wave tank at the Chicago Museum of Science and Industry, where mine is a scaled down model. This is the Connell Shelf Rise and Beach. It simulates the coastline and this is fabricated by the aquarium shop. Here's the damper. It dampens arriving waves at the beach and it's just a large bristle brush that was purchased at the hardware store. Here's the linear actuator mount. It holds the wave generator, which is the linear actuator, and it's also fabricated by the aquarium shop, and here's the linear actuator bolted to it. This is the linear actuator. A linear actuator is a motor which produces linear motion instead of spinning. It's basically a piston that moves in and out. I can control speed and position of the piston using a motor controller. I can send the motor controller a command like forward 100%, reverse 100%, or brake 100%. Those are forwards, backwards, braking, and their speeds. I can also detect the position of the piston because the linear actuator has a variable resistor inside it. I read the resistance from the microcontroller which allows me to know the piston position at any time. If I increase the speed, the generate wavelength is shorter. If the stroke length is longer, the waves have a greater amplitude. If I set the starting piston position lower into the wave tank, I can simulate high tide. I can change all these variables randomly during an experiment allowing me to create very complex waves. This is the wedge. The wedge acts as a water displacement block. It consists of foam glued to a piece of wood and it's wrapped in du duct tape and attached to a table leg end cap. It's connected to the piston I created many blocks, however I found that only one was necessary because I could control the linear actuator precisely. Here is the buoy accelerometer. It measures the g-force of the waves in the water in x, y, and z direction. I read the x, y, and z voltage using a microcontroller. With this, the greater the voltage, the greater the g-force. It's in a waterproof plastic vial with fishing weights glued to the bottom. I cut an ethernet cable and fed it through a hole in the lid. Then I soldered it to an accelerometer device. A foam block keeps this from sinking. Here's the buoy gyro. It measures rotational speed of the waves in X, Y, and Z directions in the water. I read the X, Y, and Z values using a microcontroller. The greater the value, the greater the degrees of rotation per second. This is also in a waterproof plastic vial, and I used an ethernet cable and drilled holes for the leads. 
then I soldered the leads to a gyro, and a foam block keeps this one from sinking too. Here's the beach impact sensor. It measures wave impact at the beach. I read the impact voltage using a microcontroller. For this, I cut acrylic and I glued it, and I used an ethernet cable for this one too, and I drilled holes for the leads, then I attached the leads to the sensor. This is the beach accelerometer. It measures wave force on the beach. It uses the same device as the buoy accelerometer. This is also in a waterproof pl plastic vial. I drilled holes for the leads and I soldered the leads to the accelerometer. A foam block keeps this from sinking too. Here is the jack panel. It allows me to connect and disconnect my sensors. I used a hobby box that came with the microcontroller and I cut out a hole using a Dremel. Then I soldered pins to the ethernet jacks and soldered cables in the box to a prototype board. Then I connected the cables to an Arduino protoshield. Arduino Mega. It controls the wave generator and reads the sensors a hundred times a second. It sends the sensor data wirelessly using an XB wireless device to a PC program called Read Data. The protoshield is plugged into the Arduino Mega. This is the Read Data program. Read Data is a .NET program which reads the sensor data from a second XB device. Its purpose is to save the sensor data to a CSV file and it is also used to configure the experiment allowing me to set speed and high and low position of the linear actuator. This is the anti-phase wave generator. In order to reduce the wave force at the beach, I created an anti-phase wave generator. For each wave that occurs, I counter the wave by starting and stopping a variable speed water pump. The pump pulls water from the right inlet and sends it back to the wave to the left outlet, matching the wavelength and amplitude. When the wave crest on the right is highest, the pump is running at 100%. This pump is a high performance CPU cooling pump purchased at a computer supply store. The piping is PVC cooling tube and the inlet and outlet consists of plastic pipe where I cut a slit out using a Dremel. This is the second buoy gyro. The second gyro allows me to detect the wave to control the variable speed water pump. This is the Arduino Uno. The second microcontroller uses the gyro data to start the water pump using a motor circuit sample that came with the Arduino kit. The Arduino powers on the water pump and controls its speed using an Arduino pulse with modulated pin. I soldered the components from the relay circuit sample to a proto shield. Here's the acrylic box. It keeps the circuit away from the water in the tank. To make this, I scored the plastic, then I snapped it and glued all of the pieces together. This is a demonstration of the wave generator running with water and the anti-wave generator too. MATLAB Student Edition to analyze sensor data. These are charts showing the buoy accelerometer in X, Y, and Z direction. They have a wavelength about 4.3 seconds. This chart shows how changing the end position of the linear actuator to 500 shortens the wavelength. As you can see, 
the wavelength is 1.2 seconds now. There is a proportional relationship of linear actuator speed to wave amplitude. This shows how reducing linear actuator speed to 90% reduces the wave amplitude. The range was reduced from 33.25 to 27.7. I will now show you charts which demonstrate running the anti-phase wave generator. First, I'll show you a chart with a start position of 410 and an end position of 460 and 100% speed as the baseline without running the anti-phase wave generator. This yields a strong wave with a wave length of about 1.3 seconds. This illustrates the effect of wave interference on wave strength for the beach sensors. In each table, the top row is without the anti-phase wave generator. The second, in the second row, the anti-phase generator was running. As you can see, the wave force is greatly reduced. The following charts show wave interference in the water as measured by the buoy accelerometer on the top and reduced wave strength at the beach as measured by the beach accelerometer on the bottom.